feel like the Lord has given me a message. And uh, I'm reading today from the book of Daniel. Amen. Daniel chapter number 8. Daniel chapter number 8 and verse number 13. Amen. I'll also be reading from the book of Isaiah chapter 63 and from the book of Psalms chapter 74. Amen. Daniel chapter number 8 and verse number 13. Then I heard one saint speaking, and another saint said unto that certain saint which spake, How long shall the vision concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of desolation? to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot. How long, how long is there going to be a desolation, if he can say it that way, that the sanctuary and the host should be trodden underfoot, that both the sanctuary, that the sanctuary would be trodden underfoot. Isaiah chapter number 63 in verse number 18, said this, he said, The people of thy holiness have possessed it but a little while. Our adversaries have trodden down thy sanctuary. Our adversaries have trodden down thy sanctuary. Psalm 74 in verse number 7 makes this statement. He said, They have cast fire into thy sanctuary and they have defiled by casting down the dwelling place of thy name to the ground they said in their hearts let us destroy them together and they have burned up all the synagogues of God in the land he said they have cast fire into thy sanctuary defiled it by casting down the dwelling place of the name of thy name to the ground and they said in their hearts, let us destroy them together. And they have burned up the synagogues in the land. God spoke to a man by the name of Zerubbabel. And he said, it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. And he talked about the rebuilding of the temple of God. Amen. By the help of the Lord, we're going to be preaching about the beauty of of the sanctuary the beauty of the sanctuary amen Lord Jesus I thank you Lord for the power of the Holy Ghost thank you for the anointing that rests upon your word I pray oh God that as you have spoken to my heart that you would speak to every individual that is in this place and help us Lord that we would be able to be drawn ever closer to you in the name of the Lord we ask these things and we will be careful to give you the honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. If you'll excuse me, something's giving me a popping over here. We're going to fix that. There we are. Praise the Lord. Amen. If you go to Greece today, there is uh, there are ancient buildings that that are still pretty much intact except for uh, except for what the weather has done to them though Greece was an empire amen before the coming of Jesus Christ and his birth if you go to Egypt you'll find the pyramids and uh, and they are basically the way they were at the time of Moses and you'll see the sphinxes that are there decayed perhaps, and, and, uh, but no one ever touched them. When they came, but whenever Israel came into the land of promise, and in their backsliding, uh, there was something that happened to the most beautiful building that the world has ever known. It's, it, if you read the description of the temple, at the time that, that Solomon built it, 
it would have been not a seven, not one of the seven wonders. It would have been a wonder all of its own. It was majestic and just in its natural beauty. It was a gorgeous work of art. And it was designed as a place of worship to God. It was called the temple, but it was also called the sanctuary. It was a place that that uh, that was attacked, and it's, it it uh, it intrigues me that while other ancient civilization monuments have been maintained, a temple was utterly destroyed. Not once, but twice to a point that the foundation became no longer there. I'm going to give you just a little bit of the setting of the scripture and then and then I'm going to and 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 then we'll and then I'm going to take you uh, take you on a journey because as I, as I begin to read this this is there's some incredible stuff that that the Lord began to show me the other day and I and I pray that I'll be able to present it the way that he has given it to me. Back in the time uh, right before Babylon overtook uh, overtook Israel because of their backslidings. And again I say that it was because Israel had done wrong that, that Jerusalem was, was taken. Something happened at the first when Babylon first came in. They came into the city and they captured the city and when they captured the city they left everything in, intact with the exception of taking some of the articles of furniture that was made of gold out of the temple. And they went back to Babylon with the wealth, but they left the temple intact. They left the walls intact. They left everything, they left everything the way that it should be. But the people of Israel because they had the walls and because they had the temple, they rose up again and they said, there's hope for us. And though the prophet said, you need to surrender and you need to let them have their way, they refused because of this sanctuary that they had in their midst. When it finally came to the place where they were totally defeated, Babylon went in there and the first thing that they did is they tore down the walls of the city because as long as there were walls, the people, amen, would continue to defend that city. The second thing they did was they went into the temple and they took all of the brass, they took all of the precious metals, they took any of the, any of the articles of furniture that were there and they took them and they literally gutted that temple. And when it was gutted, then they began to tear it completely down. Not just tear it down and level it to the ground, but the Bible gives us indication according to the book of Ezra that after they took the walls down, they literally took the foundation and they tore out the foundation of that temple. Amen. I believe the reason they did that is because they must have felt that as long as there was a foundation that Israel would say, we still have hope that there can be another day. They felt like if we can, be, if we can tear it completely down, Amen. Israel will lose their fight and Israel will lose their hope and they will say, without the house of God, we have no hope. Without a sanctuary, amen, there is no vision. Without the sanctuary, his glory is not among us. Amen. And so Babylon attacked the temple of that day because 
they understood, amen, what Israel didn't even understand that there is a power that the sanctuary has that no other building has. Amen. I want you to know today, amen, that the place where we worship, amen, and choose to worship our God, though it may not be made of gold and silver, this house that God has chosen for us to dwell in, for us to worship at, is a sanctuary where I can run into the house of God and I can find a refuge and I can find a place of peace and I can find the power of God. I'm thankful that today, oh hallelujah, there is a beauty that I can find in his sanctuary. Oh hallelujah, amen. So when Daniel read about it, as I I begin to look again at the story of Daniel, In Daniel chapter number 1, amen, the Bible tells us, amen, that it was in the first year of Nebuchadnezzar, amen, that Daniel was taken. At the same time that he was taken into Babylon, amen, was the same time that they began to bring in, amen, or bring out of Jerusalem the gold of the temple, bringing out all of the precious things of the temple. Perhaps in the caravan that a man brought Daniel into his captivity, he could watch as the articles of furniture, a man, were taken out of the place that he had chosen to worship God. Amen. And Daniel, amen, was not among the unrighteous, but Daniel was a righteous man. And it broke Daniel's heart to watch as they were, amen, desecrating, if you will, amen, the house of God. As they were disrespecting, amen, the things that had been dedicated into the things of God. Amen. And then it must have came by the time Daniel chapter 8 came around, amen, it must have come to the place, amen, where they had utterly destroyed or made desolate, amen, the temple. And Daniel was saying, how long is this going to happen? He said, I in my vision heard the saints as the saints cried out. God, we're tired of seeing, amen, the sanctuary destroyed. We need your sanctuary. We need a revival of the sanctuary one more time. We need a restoration of the things of God one more time. Can I tell you what the church needs more than anything else? We need a restoration, hallelujah, of the place where God dwells. We need a place where God can touch man and man would come to God. Hallelujah. We need a revival of souls. We need a revival of prayer. We need a revival, hallelujah, of Folks being filled with the Holy Ghost and baptized in his precious name. Oh, hallelujah. Let's worship the Lord here today. I love you, Lord. I praise you, O oh God. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. As I begin to, uh, as I begin to read, amen, through the scriptures, and I begin to look at the beauty of the sanctuary, more than the gold, more than the intricate detail of the flowers that were upon it, more than all of the artwork that was throughout it, more than the more than the golden images of uh, uh, of angelic beings that were in the most holy place. I want you to know that there was a beauty, hallelujah, that stepped beyond the beauty of gold and stepped beyond the artwork of man's doings. For Exodus chapter number, amen, chapter number 15, he said, and verse number 17, it said, and thou shalt bring them in and plant them in the mountain of thine inheritance, in the place, O Lord, which thou hast made for thee to dwell in, in the sanctuary, O Lord, which thy hands have established. Amen. Way back in Exodus, before they ever stepped foot into the promised land, amen, they wrote and they said, God, 
there's a mountain, amen, in the promised land that you have chosen. And there is a place where you, amen, have chosen to dwell. Hallelujah. And I can identify it and say, you chose the sanctuary. You've chosen to dwell at this mountain and in this place. Oh, hallelujah. I want you to know the first beauty of the sanctuary is that it's a place where God dwells. Hallelujah. It's a place where God chooses, amen, to dwell among us. Amen. He doesn't choose to dwell at the football stadium. He doesn't choose to dwell, amen, down at the bar room. But he chooses to dwell in the house that we call the sanctuary. Oh, hallelujah. What a beautiful place that this is. Amen. Hallelujah. Secondly, in Exodus chapter number 25, verse number 8, amen, he said, God gave the commandment and let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. The sanctuary was not just a place for God to dwell, but it was a place where God wanted to dwell among them. Can I tell you that the sanctuary is a place where God wants to dwell among us? <laughs> In other words, he wants us to be close to him. And he wants to be close to us. Hallelujah. Then I read in Exodus chapter number 30, and, uh, and, and, and these words are different times through it, but I, I, uh, Exodus chapter number 30 and verse number 13, it said, This they shall give everyone that passeth among them that are numbered a half a shekel after the shekel of the sanctuary. A shekel is 20 giras, a half a shekel shall be the offering of the Lord. Now, this doesn't make too much sense all by itself, and, and I'm going to just try to explain it real quick, but... <clears throat> Uh, there was a standard measurement of money at that time. And it wasn't a matter of, let me see your dollar bill or let me see your weight of what, of what a piece of gold or what a piece of silver would weigh. Let me see what yours would weigh and let me compare them out. But the way that they measured all of the financial aspects of it, amen, was by this shekel that was in the sanctuary. Everything that was measured, if you wanted to know if, if yours was authentic and yours was the right weight, amen, you didn't go and try to let me compare with Jesse now what I have and let's see if ours match up. Amen. Or let me compare with my dad and see if ours match up. If I really want to know if the shekel that I have is right, amen, I've got to bring it back to the sanctuary and whenever I get it to the sanctuary, I compare it and I say, this is what I have. This is what the sanctuary has. Does it line up? Amen. And as long as there was a sanctuary, there was a place to measure, amen, and know what was right and what was wrong. More than just a monetary, amen, the sanctuary was the place, amen, that could be the standard, amen, where we would know how to live our life, how to dress, how to walk, how to talk, amen. But if the sanctuary is not there, you don't know what to do, how to go, where to live, amen, and all of the way to the worship. But as long as there's a sanctuary, amen, I'm not comparing myself with somebody else but I'm coming into the house of God and let's see how I measure up amen in the line of God oh hallelujah amen and can I tell you the shekel of our sanctuary amen is not you and it's not me but it's Calvary hallelujah what he did at Calvary amen is what I have got to try to reach toward until I reach that city until I reach that type of sacrifice I haven't given enough I haven't prayed enough. I haven't offered enough. But God help me that I would measure, hallelujah, myself in the sanctuary. To measure myself in the sanctuary. Hallelujah. If I measure myself by somebody else, I'd be like the, uh, uh, like the Pharisee that came down and began to pray. And he said, oh God, I do this and I do that and I pray this amount of times and I fast and I give this amount of money and I, I'm such an awesome guy. And I'm so thankful that I'm not like this other fellow over here that's nothing but a heathen. Look at him. He's a, he's a scum of the earth. You know what he's doing? He was measuring himself with somebody else. He wasn't measuring himself the way that God wanted him to measure himself by. 
In the meantime, amen, that old publican was smiting himself on the chest and he said, I don't even want to look at him. I can't compare myself to him, but God, I know one thing. Whenever I look at you and I try to compare myself with you, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. He came into the sanctuary, and the sanctuary gave him the true measurement and the true way that he would know how to live and the true way that he would know, amen, where he needed to line up to. Exodus chapter number 36 and verse number 1. And, uh, and we, uh, I'm going to try to fly pretty fast here, but, I, but in Exodus chapter 36 and verse number 1, Then wrought Bezalel and uh, Aholiab, every wise-hearted man in whom the Lord put wisdom and understanding, to know how to work all manner of work for the service of the sanctuary, according to all that the Lord had commanded. He said there is a, there is a service that goes on in the sanctuary. He said there is a manner of work for the service of the sanctuary. There's a way that we come into this place to serve the Lord. And without a sanctuary to let us know how to come in and how to go out, amen, is to serve the Lord. I, I was at a, a conference one time and, and, and uh, a minister, uh, it was a, it was like a minister's conference and, and, uh, there was, I was, I was sitting up on some, uh, on the bleachers on the sidelines and down on the main, on the main part of the conference floor, there was a couple that had two kids and, uh, whenever the music started, uh, those kids did like this, there was worship going on. And those kids went like this. And the whole time that there was singing, those kids were doing like this. And about halfway through the song, I saw the dad. And the dad got up from his seat and he went like this. The reason, I didn't hear the words that were being said, but the reason worshiping was because they had seen dad in the sanctuary and they had seen dad worshiping God and whenever they saw how dad worshiped God they said this is the way that we ought to act when we're in the house of God whenever the music starts and whenever it's time to worship God it's time to do what's right amen they learned in the sanctuary how to worship God Oh, hallelujah. Amen. And, uh, and, so, and so in Psalms 30 and verse number 6, And thou shalt put it up before the veil, that is, before the ark of the, by the ark of the testimony, before the mercy seat. Amen. I got the wrong verse. Let me, let me go on to Leviticus chapter number 19. And Leviticus 19 and verse number 30. And ye shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary and you shall keep my Sabbath and reverence my sanctuary in other words he said you got to have a sanctuary to know how to give honor you got to have a sanctuary amen to know how to give reverence to God hallelujah Amen. And when I when I begin to when I when I begin to think back over the times, Amen, growing up, that the power and presence of God, Amen. Oh, I know He's everywhere. Amen. But there's something special about the house of God. Amen. I, I can't explain it except to say I remember, amen, many a time whenever, whenever the power of God would move into the sanctuary. And, uh, and as a kid, amen, my attention span might not have been all that great. Amen. But when the presence of the Lord moved in, 
Amen. I, 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 I'd, I'd get off my seat and I'd turn around and I'd put my head, amen, in, my, in the pew and I'd try to pray because there was something, amen, about the presence of God in the sanctuary. I didn't want to misbehave whenever I was in his presence, amen. And I learned how to act because I had been in the sanctuary and I knew that this was not just, amen, any place. This is not like the schoolhouse, amen. This is not like, amen, any other place that you've ever been. This is the place where God, amen, can meet with man. Hallelujah. And in this place, I learned how to reverence him, amen, and how to give him the honor that is due his name. Amen. I'm not going to just cut up, amen, in the house of God. I'm going to let the house of God, let the sanctuary be a place that I reverence. Hallelujah. And respect. I thank God for a sanctuary, a place that I can, amen, that I can go and I can find my direction. Amen. There is a beauty in the sanctuary. Hallelujah. Amen. The next thing that I read in Leviticus chapter number 21 and verse number 12. Amen. Neither shall he go out of the sanctuary. Amen. Nor profane the sanctuary of his God. For the crown of the anointing oil of his God is upon him. I am the Lord. He said to the priest that's walked into the sanctuary, I don't want you to go out any other place because there has, there has come, because you're in the sanctuary, there is an anointing, <laughs> hallelujah, amen, that comes because you're in the sanctuary. There is an anointing in this place, oh hallelujah. And I say today, I feel that anointing, hallelujah, in this sanctuary, the presence of the Lord, hallelujah is upon us today. Amen. It happens in the sanctuary. I don't feel the same way when I'm on my job at Home Depot. I don't feel the same way when I'm fishing. Amen. I don't feel that same anointing. But there's something about coming into this house. I love the feeling. Amen. Of feeling the anointing of God. Hallelujah. Coming down upon me. I'm glad. As the psalmist said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Because there is an anointing. Hallelujah. That comes in the house of the Lord. There's a it's a beautiful thing. Hallelujah. It's only in the sanctuary that you could ever really see what music is really meant to be like. Only in the sanctuary. Because whenever you stand out in the crowd, the crowd sings with a pretty voice and they, and they sing about cheating and they sing about lying and they sing about parties and they sing about sin and they sing about all of the things that they're all of their ungodliness that they're proud of. But when you step into the sanctuary, amen, perhaps an un untrained voice, perhaps a person, amen, that uh, doesn't know that much. I've watched them step behind the pulpit. And there is something that touches that individual as they begin to sing. And I've watched the entire congregations, not because of the sound of the voice, but because there's something that happens in the sanctuary. Hallelujah. And God begins to bless a congregation. Amen. Through the worship. Amen. That comes as somebody just says, God, I'm not coming to you because I'm a pretty voice, but I'm coming to you to give you praise and honor. I've come here to give you the glory that's due your name. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. He said, don't go out of the sanctuary. Amen. The anointing oil of his God is upon him. Can I tell you if God has ever put his hand upon you in anointing, don't ever go out away from the things of God. Amen. Give what talent and what blessing that God has given. It doesn't belong to the world. It belongs to God. When God gives a talent, when God gives the ability, amen, it's designed that it would be used for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. It was never meant to leave the sanctuary. Numbers chapter 3 and verse number 31. Hallelujah. And their charge shall be the ark and the table and the candlestick and the altars and the vessels of the sanctuary wherewith they minister, the hanging and all the service thereof. 
Their charge shall be all of these different articles of furniture and the vessels of the sanctuary. If there was no sanctuary, there'd be no place to put vessels. If there was no sanctuary, there'd be no place for you and I. Empty vessels. What was it that the old prophet said? He said, the Lord told me, he said, arise and go down to the potter's house. And I'll show you a work. And the potter began to make a vessel and it was marred in the hand of the potter and he, and he remade it and he made it again a vessel of honor. And he compared it, amen, to the life of Israel but I believe if you take it down to our life I believe that God, is, God would compare our life to that vessel. Amen. And he would say, I'm the one that fashioned the clay. And, and the reason that I can, the reason I'm anything at all for the things of God is because I've stayed in the sanctuary. If I ever left the sanctuary, there's really nothing out there for me. There's nothing left. Hallelujah. This sanctuary is the place where I find a place to dwell. It's the place where I live. Hallelujah. It's the place for the vessels of God. What's a vessel of God? It's something that, that's used in service to God. Amen. And, uh, and, I, and I, I step off for just a second and I say, whenever, whatever you do in the kingdom of God, amen, from the, from the sweeping of the church, amen, to the mowing of the lawn or whatever it is that you do around the church, thank God for everything that you do because it's a service to God. Amen. And when you serve God, you're a vessel in the sanctuary. Amen. And God can use somebody that stays in the sanctuary. First Chronicles chapter number 22 and verse number 19. Amen. Now set your heart and your soul to seek the Lord your God. Arise and build you the sanctuary of the Lord. Bring in the ark of the covenant of the Lord and the holy vessels of God into the house that is to be built uh, to the name of the Lord. Amen. The sanctuary was built, amen, to give honor to the name of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. If you want to see the beauty of the sanctuary, understand that a true sanctuary honors and reverences the name of our God. Hallelujah. I'm thankful today that we know a name that is above every name. The name of Jesus Christ is the most powerful name in all of the world. Amen. And though I may use his name in prayer whenever I'm out there, there's something awesome about a church that begins to breathe the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. I wonder if we couldn't do it just for a minute right now. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. What a beautiful name. What a precious name. Salvation's in that name. Something awesome whenever we begin to call on the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. It causes the, prayer, the power of hell to be, to be stopped. Hallelujah. It causes sicknesses to be healed. It causes sins to be remitted. What a precious name the name of Jesus is. Hallelujah. And this sanctuary was designed. Hallelujah. Amen. For the purpose of reverencing and giving honor to a name that is above every name. The name of Jesus Christ. I'm thankful for a sanctuary. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. In this house, oh hallelujah, we honor the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And when we honor his name, the things in heaven, hallelujah, give honor to the sanctuary. The things on the earth give honor to the sanctuary. And the things under the earth have got to submit to the power that's in the sanctuary because this sanctuary has been given, hallelujah, to honor the name of Jesus. Christ. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Precious name. Oh, how sweet. It's the hope of earth and the joy of heaven. Psalms 20. Amen. And verse number two. Psalms 20 and verse number two said, send thee help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion.
Amen. How many times, amen, have we not known what direction? And the adversary seems to be coming against us from every, amen, from every turn, amen. But I've got news for you. If you can understand that in the sanctuary, hallelujah, is where your help comes from, amen. If I can get back to the sanctuary, hallelujah, if I can somehow touch the throne of the one that's in the sanctuary, I know that everything's going to be all right. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Psalms chapter 63 and verse number 2 said, To see thy power and thy glory, so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. He said, when I stepped into the sanctuary, I saw things that I never seen before. When I stepped into the sanctuary, I saw the glory of God. And there's nothing more beautiful than the glory of God. I saw the power of God in his demonstration. Oh, I know I saw his power, amen, in the stars as his handiwork. And I know I've seen his power, amen, in operation as the sun rises and sets. And I know that I've seen his power as he stops storms and as he heals the sick out, out there. But there's something awesome about stepping into this place and seeing the power of God in operation. Oh, Hallelujah. Uh, he said, I, I want to see it more and more. My demonstration of the power and glory of God and what he wants to do in the rest of the world, my demonstration was first given to me in the sanctuary. Psalms chapter number 68 said, They have seen thy goings, O God, even the goings of my God, my King, in the sanctuary. They have seen God's direction from the sanctuary. If you want to know the ways that God wants you to be let in, you don't find it anywhere else than in the sanctuary. But all direction comes from God's house. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm glad to be in the house of God. Amen. Psalms chapter 73 the first part of it says, My feet well nigh slipped when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. But when you get down to verse number 17, he said, Until I went into the sanctuary of God. Until I went into the sanctuary of God. I had, I had some issues with misunderstanding and not, uh, not knowing, amen, why the wicked were prospering and why this was happening, why that was happening, amen. And something within me said, get back to the sanctuary because there's something awesome that can happen when you step into the sanctuary. When you step into the sanctuary, you begin to see, hallelujah, their end, but you also begin to see the beauty that's in this place. Oh, I'm thankful, hallelujah, for the beauty of the Lord. I'm thankful, hallelujah, amen, for the beauty of our God. He, amen, for there is understanding in the sanctuary. Psalms 96, amen, the Bible said, honor, verse number six said, honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. If you want to know, amen, where the power of God, amen, and where, the, where he takes his king, roll, roll as king of kings and lord of all lords, amen, his main role as the king of kings and the lord of lords, it's not taken down at the capitol building, but the place where he is the king of kings and where he is the lord of lords is in the sanctuary. Hallelujah. And we set him up upon him his throne. Hallelujah. And when we step into the sanctuary, we see honor and we see majesty. Hallelujah. We see his strength and we see his beauty. It's in the sanctuary. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Verse number nine, a man said, oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him. Hallelujah. Oh, 
the earth. Amen. So he first of all says, amen, you'll see his beauty in the sanctuary. Then he says, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Amen. He said, amen, the way that you'll see the beauty of God is when you step into the, into the sanctuary and you see the saints in the sanctuary as they worship God in the beauty of holiness. As they come, amen, trying their best to be pure before God, trying to be right before God. And in the sanctuary I can see the beauty of holiness hallelujah that God puts upon man well praise the Lord Psalms chapter 150 said praise you the Lord hallelujah and I want to make sure I read it right he said praise you the Lord praise God in his sanctuary praise him in the firmament of his power. Hallelujah. So if I'm reading that, amen, there is a, there, praise you the Lord is a, is a sentence. Praise him in the sanctuary, in his sanctuary, there is a colon which means, which means the sentence isn't complete yet. The thought has not yet been completed. He said, it's not just Praise him in the sanctuary. But he said, amen, he, it's in the firmament of his power. So the sanctuary is the atmosphere of the power of God. When we begin to praise God in the sanctuary, it creates the atmosphere for God to work. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why when you read in the book, in, I think it's around the 30 something, 34th, something like that chapter, he said, Oh, clap your hands, O ye people, and shout unto God with the voice of triumph. If you read on down, amen, in that same chapter, it says, God is gone up with the shout, the Lord with the voice of triumph. In other words, when we begin to clap our hands and shout unto God, amen, in praising him, amen, there is a firmament or an atmosphere that is created. When we begin to clap our hands and when we begin to shout unto God, there's something that begins to happen. Hallelujah. It creates an atmosphere. Amen. For God to work. It allows the power of God to be demonstrated. Oh, hallelujah. I wonder if we couldn't do it right now. Let's clap our hands and worship God. Hallelujah. There's an atmosphere that God wants to give us today. Hallelujah. In his sanctuary. So in the sanctuary, hallelujah, you understand where praise, hallelujah, truly belongs and how, true, how praise is truly done. When we step into the sanctuary, everything changes, hallelujah. Yesterday, there was a game that went on between two, two competitive teams and and uh, I don't play. I don't play this stuff. I don't really. But uh, but I noticed that there were guys that had uh, on my job that had a duct tape sticker that had the S on it. I'm serious. It had a green with yellow with an S on it. This other dude had had on his deal great big old big old piece of tape that said U of M. 
and Blue and May sitting right there. And uh, we're not even supposed to be to, to wear anything like that. But you know what? They said this is where this is where we really feel this is what we really worship. This is what we really and uh, I, I never seen so many people take breaks as what they did during that during that two hours. You know, there are more people in the break room than there was on the floor to helping people. You know why? Because they were worshiping before their God. And they were saying, I can't remember the name. I hope he gets hurt or I hope he doesn't get hurt, depending on which scene that they was playing. And I was thinking, what a sad thing to think, to hope that the quarterback gets hurt. You know. But I come into this place today. And, uh, and I come to the point where I want to give him in the sanctuary what he's really doing here. Those folks went nuts yesterday simply because somebody was playing around with a piece of pig skin. You know, they paid I wish, you know, I wish just one Sunday I'd get everybody in the church to give. I wish every Sunday they could give the price that folks pay to go to a football game every Sunday. You know that if we did that, I'm sorry, I gotta get this, I gotta get this in my if I could get everybody here to pay for an, for just an annual pass to the MSU games. <laughs> this year should never have a financial worry. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? What are they, $35 to $50 a ticket? And sometimes more than that? 80? 80 bucks. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. 17 in here. I know there's 20 of us. Let's see, sixteen hundred dollars every week, and you know what? Some of those same folks, whenever we take up an offering in church, and just say, "Give what you can to the Lord," would say, "All that church is wants is money." You know, what's what's right about that? Because they go pay the eighty bucks, and then. And then they're going to buy hot dogs and whatever else they buy there. And, if, and you, know, you know what I'm saying. You know. Time they get done with one game. Oh, man. What, what could happen? I mean, I'm not talking to, you know, if this church is just with 20 people in the church. Every Sunday, if I could just get what they got on game day. Wow. <laughs> and it was for two hours. And there was people that left sad and drunk as a skunk with a hangover. And nobody really, after tomorrow... We'll really remember all of the details of the game except for the coaches and except for the folks that played it. If you ask probably three weeks from now, what was the score of the UM game and MSU, you might get some of them that really are dedicated and everything, but most of them, even that went, wouldn't remember. But I remember coming into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. The night that I got the Holy Ghost. And I remember, hallelujah, the presence of God that swept into that place. I got something that money can't buy. Hallelujah. And I ought not be ashamed whenever I say the sanctuary is the most beautiful place in all the world. There's no place like the sanctuary. For I've seen folks freed from the bondage of alcohol. I've seen folks delivered from drugs. I've seen cancers healed. <laughs> that never happened at a football game. 
Hallelujah. Amen. I've seen broken homes brought back together. I've seen the miraculous happen and God has given jobs. I've seen God do, amen, some phenomenal things. Amen. And I'll tell you what, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God. I'd rather dwell in the sanctuary where the, amen, where there's beauty. I'd rather live here than I would to live prosperous in the house of the wicked. I'd rather live in the place where beauty's at. I may not have all the gold. I may not have all the wealth of this world, but I've got wealth untold in the things of God. I thank God for his truth. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, hallelujah. Let's worship the Lord in this place today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So Isaiah said it, or so Isaiah said it like this in Isaiah chapter number six. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. So I want, you, I want you to understand what's happening here. The reason that Babylon destroyed the temple was because it, Babylon is a type of sin. Babylon is a type of the world. And the world is, is controlled by Satan. And it wasn't Babylon that destroyed that temple. But Satan said, there is a place where the throne room of God is. Upon earth. In the heavens, his throne is in the heavens. But he has chosen to put a throne on earth. And his throne on earth is in the sanctuary. <laughs> Don't you understand? That? I mean, this, is, this is awesome. You can never grasp what the Lord is trying to say. When you step into this place, you're not just stepping into any place. You're stepping into the place where the throne room of God is. And uh, I, I don't know if I can really do it justice, but if you can somehow understand you're coming into the place where the King of Kings and Lord of Lords is ruling and reigning. And the reason that the devil tries to keep people from coming to church is because he understands if I can keep you out of church, you don't have a throne room that's right. You don't have a throne room that's, that's right. As long as you're not coming to the sanctuary, amen, his throne room is upside down and you don't have a, a ruler that's right in your, in your life. And, and God said, no man can serve two masters. Either you serve God or you serve the devil. That's what Jesus said. And he said, and so he said, the importance of the sanctuary Amen. The importance of the sanctuary is that as long as you're in the house of God, you have set up a throne room for God to rule in your life. When you come into the sanctuary, you set up a place where you can, where you can bow before the King of kings and Lord of lords. You'll never get in before any other political leader in the world. None of us will. But to think that the great God of glory, hallelujah, is in this house today. <laughs> I'm telling you, there's a beauty in the sanctuary. Amen. Jesus walked into, and I, and I oh man, I have, I have preached way beyond my time. 
But Jesus in Matthew 21 and verse number 13, he walked into the temple and he said, I see that there's been an attack on my house. I see that the sanctuary has missed, amen, missed priorities. For he said, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. In other words, amen, you're not seeing the true beauty. All you're seeing is rocks in place. All you're seeing is something that took a long time to build. You're not seeing, amen, the place of relationship. You're not seeing the place, hallelujah, where I touch man and where I show my mercy and where I show my power and where I show my glory. You're not seeing it. But if you can come into the sanctuary one more time and bow before me, there's something awesome that can happen in this sanctuary. Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so, so I finish with this scripture and I'm, and, I'm, and I'm done. If you'll stand together with me. The beauty, the beauty in the sanctuary. Ezekiel chapter number 47, verse number 12. Ezekiel 47 and verse number 12. And by the river upon the bank thereof, on this side and on that, in a place where there was wilderness, where it was desert, shall grow all trees for meat whose leaf shall not fade, neither shall the fruit thereof be consumed. It shall bring forth new fruit according to his months, because their waters issued out of the sanctuary. When the sanctuary is in the center of everything and whenever you are using the sanctuary, when you're coming into the house of God, there's something that begins to happen and the water of life begins to flow out. Hallelujah. And bring healing. Hallelujah. And, and bring direction. And bring revival. Hallelujah. In his house. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, I thank you today for your sanctuary. I'm glad that you gave me a house, hallelujah, to come to. Lord, I want to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Hallelujah. I want to be closer to you and Lord, help me to appreciate the sanctuary more than I ever have before. Hallelujah, Jesus. In the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Is there anybody else that wants to come and pray today? Hallelujah, Jesus.